Oh Jesus, look what I'm playing. Welcome everyone to my first PS1 Let's Play. And this is Clock Tower. Uh, now, I guess it's kind of like a half sequel, half remake. I mean, it is technically kind of like Clock Tower 2. But you can also consider it a remake in some ways because it's... Um, well, it's the only Clock Tower besides the original for the Super Nintendo to feature the same characters, you know, protagonist, antagonist. Whereas all the others were, you know, completely different. Anyway, here's the intros coming up, so... The evil mother of men. With a knife? No, it sounds crazy, but it looks like they were killed with a giant pair of scissors. The giant scissors once again search for prey. The trail of terror stretches across Europe, from Norway to England. There it is, the Barrow's Mansion. We have to go there and look around, or we'll never solve the mystery of scissor men. Got to be joking. It's way too dangerous. As long as he's alive, we're not safe anywhere. One after another, the horrifying murders continue. Who will make it through this game of murder alive? Clock Tower. <laughs> I have many, um... Oh, fear is fascinating. It sure is. I have many, um... Funny stories, actually, about this. I used to, me and my friends, you know, well, they're not friends anymore, but when I was a kid, when I was about 12, me and my friends used to hire this. Like, we used to rent this a lot at video stores. And, um, once, <laughs> we used to find it so freaky. A lot of you may find this game lame now. But, um, back then, Scissor Man was just, oh, he was freaky. And about four of us were playing it one day, me and three other guys, and, uh, we we're all sitting there on the lounge at, you know, my grandparents' place. And we we're all sitting there playing it because we just rented it. And all of a sudden, my my father, the arsehole, he runs in with a pair of garden shears yelling, going, rah, at us. And it, uh, you've never seen four kids jump on a lounge so quickly. It's freaky. God damn. Okay, this is the weird prologue. This The first part of this game is so boring and so slow, but it gets better. The first 20 minutes is just a drag. Professor Bark. Professor Bark. What on earth are you doing, Professor? You mustn't hypnotize her like this. She's not ready to remember the murders yet. Helen, the clock tower murders are fascinating research material for me. I must know the truth of what happened. She can't take any more of this today, Professor. I'm taking her home. All right. But remember one thing, Helen. You may be her guardian, but you are also my assistant. So do as you damn well told, Professor. woman. Professor Barton is a bit of an ass. A bit of a jerk. He doesn't care about anyone. He's a bit of a sociopath, just as long as he gets his work done. Okay, now you've got to examine everything in this area. As I said, I don't know why really. Cocktail murders, a mass murder of over 10 victims in this case. How intriguing. Jennifer Simpson, only one of two survivors. I have to get information of her for future profiling. Materials. I love how it does that. Uh, can't examine that. I thought you could. I haven't played this for a while. Examine the cabinet, and then you just really have to do the shears, the, garden, uh, the scissors. Hmm, there's a faint smell of ammonia. wonder why. I really thought there was a... a hint there, but... I don't know. I wonder what happened. Maybe it's later on. A giant pair of scissors on the desk. They're a replica of the scissors used by the murderer. The clock tower case. These are like the weapon he used to slash up his victims. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, that's really all you need to examine, but it gets worse. Let's examine the light switch. 
Just a light switch. Now, you smart person. The way they walk out of the door, it really annoys me. Especially when you're running. My laboratory. Lately I've been doing mostly criminal psychology research. Hmm, the staff is still here. They're trying to impress your greedy ass. Uh, this is the key... Pretty much the key item for the entire game. A statue, it is cold. One of the items found at the scene of the clock tower murders. Seems to be hiding some sort of secret. It would be a good idea to get an expert opinion on this. Now we just talk to everyone. Professor Helen left a few minutes ago and she looked... really angry. Hmm. In other words, he doesn't give a toss. You know, Helen and Jennifer are really beginning to look like sisters, aren't they? I guess that's what happens when you live together. <laughs> One mustn't let their personal feelings get in the way. Jennifer is nothing more than another subject. Ha, oh, you cold bastard. Ah, uh, yes, yes, you're right. I wish I had a cute kid sister. A cute kid brother would be okay too. Now you have to talk to her for that many times, but yet once she says that about a kid sister, that's pretty much the ending point. A stuffed animal looks like a prize one at a fair. And you have to do these things, otherwise you can't leave the room. It's pretty silly. Helen's desk. Huh, Jim Carrey forgot his mask. This is a man's rubber mask, a kind sold in cheap novelty shops and seems to be fairly popular. People certainly buy stupid things. Professor, a newspaper reporter is here. Did you have an appointment for an interview? It's about the clock tower murders, isn't it? It's about your mama. Hmm. I guess they want to sensationalise this scissor man who really doesn't even exist. Scissor man, it'd be cool if you were real. Huh? Uh, um, just a joke. Hmm. So he wishes scissor man was real and he has his mask on his desk. He's scissor man. Harris's desk clipped out articles of the clock tower story I scattered about. Seems Harris has gone somewhere. Okay, I'm gonna do a quick spoiler. Harris, that Danny guy, he isn't scissor man. I was just kidding. Learn to accept jokes. Jesus, people. Uh, now, this is an important part of the game. This determines who you play as and where you play. Oh, Professor. A newspaper reporter was looking for you on the first floor. Oh, thank you. Now, I'm only talking to this guy once, because if you talk to him twice, you play as Jennifer. Uh, for this Let's Play, I am playing as Helen. Uh, I don't know why, but I just think that the story and everything's just a little bit better. I like the characters better. We go down to the first floor. I'm going to try and do, like, the best kind of uh, Let's Play, like the scariest and most interesting. Oh, hey, Professor, this is the worst part of the game, I swear to God. I'm the one who called you from the Oslo Weekly News. My name is Nolan Campbell. And this is Tim, my cameraman. It's a pleasure. I'm a bit busy. Please keep it brief. Then I'll get right to the point. Just don't poke me with it. Have you, ever, have you been able to figure out who the murderer is? I can't say anything for sure yet, because the... Well, if he was, he'd be in prison. Victim's testimony lacks... Credibility. I mean, like, Scissorman would be in prison if he knew who it was. Oh, do you mean the victims? That's terrifying. That'd be Jennifer Simpson, wouldn't it? Yes, but what about her? Oh, uh, nothing really. It's just that we saw her leaving a few minutes ago. And since we'd run into her... We asked her for an interview, but she refused. Oh, what a pity. You just said a testimony lacked credibility. I know what you are going to say. That monster she was talking about, the scissor man. 
and whether he really exists or not. That's it, that's right. That is what our readers want to know. Because the existence of the Scissorman has become a symbol of terror among youngsters. Yes, that's because trashy gossip magazines like yours have sensationalised the whole thing. Ouch, that hurts. What a kick in the nuts that is. Not much I can say to that, is there? Well, let's start from the conclusion. It's fact that there was a murderer who used a giant pair of scissors as his murder weapon. But that doesn't make him into an immortal monster. Oh, I don't know. We're just dealing with some odd screwball. But what about what she said? She was scared. She thought she saw something. Oh, I don't know, Davy. Oh, I see, but... Okay, that's it. Interview's over. Thank God. There is something I must be attending to. Ah, well, okay, I understand. Thank you very much. For nothing. Sorry it couldn't be as much help as you had hoped. You're not sorry. I have to get back to the lab. I'm expecting another survivor of the clock tower. Murders. He's supposed to be a young boy about ten years... old. Imagine talking like that in real life. Wouldn't it be funny? Okay, so back to the third floor we go. Oh, sorry. There's no reason to go to the third floor. Second, I hate to waste time. Up we go. That's not the worst part. The worst part is, is yet to come. This prologue is so damn long. What's a bird doing in the corridor of a university? In we go. So that Harris guy is gone, so you have to make your mind up pretty much straight away. Like he's in here, but you can't talk to him, you're getting to change who you want to be as. Uh, click on the statue. This is another important moment. That's right, I still need to get an expert opinion on this statue. This decides where the second um, scenario takes place. Oh, he's going to say the same crap. So if you choose to not give it to Harris, you'll play in the library. If you choose to give it to him, you'll play in the mansion. I will be doing the mansion. Professor, the boy that survived the clock tower mur murders is here. Oh, has he arrived already? Yes, he's waiting in the therapy room. Is there something I can do for you? Now we click on the statue. Yeah, we'll be going to the, uh, the mansion. Oh, that's right. I still need to get an expert opinion on this statue. I should probably ask Professor Sullivan, the head librarian at the Metropolitan Library. Yes, but there was that old butler at the Barrows Mansion named Rick. We'll be doing that one. I'll show it to him first to see if he knows anything. It's just a much freakier and interesting stage. I'm pretty sure he lives in the suburbs. Could ask Karis to show it to him. Ask Karis, yes or no. We'll go yes. Alright, I'll ask Harris to show it to Rick. Harris, would you take the statue and show it to a man named Rick? Is that the statue that was at the scene of the murders? Yes, it is. Would you ask him if he knows anything about it? Yes, I'll go and ask him on my way home this evening. Very good, thank you. Jolly good. Okay, that's that. I should probably go to the therapy room. And now we go and talk to Edward and Kate, or Kay. I forget. And then it skips over to uh, Helen, where we have to do more talking and crap. Thank you very much for coming. Kay, how do you do? I'm, in, I'm an instructor at the Granite Orphanage. I'm Edward's guardian. Edward? I thought he completely lost all his memory. From the shock. Does he remember his name? 
No, I call him Edward because not having a name to go by makes things very difficult. Dot dot dot. Now, since it's our first day, will you answer some simple questions for me? Okay, Edward. Now, I want you to honestly tell me everything you remember about what happened, for God's sake. Uh, yes. You know, he's a bright boy, this one. Well then, let's get started. And we don't get to see it. I'm going to save it and stop here. And I'll see you guys for the next part. Bye-bye. Hang on, I'll let you see me save it. There you go, 12 minutes. Whoopie do. Did I just save it twice? Oh, it doesn't matter. See you next time.